ITAM on the ServiceNow platform in five minutes. The first step is to populate your ServiceNow CMDB with hardware and software data. And we can do this a number of ways. One method is to use ServiceNow's discovery capabilities. We offer both agent-based and agent-less, also known as horizontal or IP-based discovery. For agentless, we can connect directly into your infrastructure and through ServiceNow's discovery patterns, uncover hardware relationships between end user devices, data center infrastructure, such as network equipment, servers, virtual and physical, and understanding the relationship between them. On the agent side, we deploy a simple agent on the end user device that collects hardware model, software installation, and software utilization data. Most customers will use a combination of the two depending on the environment. We can also use third-party inventory. That refers to investments already made by customers in network monitoring, systems management, security, and other monitoring tools. Popular examples of these include Microsoft Intune and Microsoft SCCM, also known as Endpoint Manager. A more extensive list of connectors that we have on the ServiceNow store is available here. We can also connect into public cloud providers especially for customers that have multi-cloud environments. So whether that's Azure, Google Cloud, AWS, or a combination, we've got a connector that can ingest compute, database, storage, and installed software for resources that are housed in those environments and bring them in under a single architecture, single data model onto our platform. So we're speaking one consistent language for what's in your environment, regardless of which provider it's with. In addition to public cloud, we can also connect into popular software as a service or SaaS apps. ServiceNow has direct to publisher integrations for over 35 commonly used applications. The popular ones are on the screen here with a much broader list available here. If you're using an identity provider like Okta or Azure or Entra, we can connect into those identity providers. And if you've got single sign-on connected for other applications, we can connect into potentially thousands of others. Through our low-code, no-code platform, we can also create custom integrations to any SaaS application, provided the API is accessible. We can also connect into procurement systems. So that's Workday Financials, SAP, Oracle, et cetera, to ingest financial data associated to your hardware and software purchases. And of course, we can always ingest spreadsheet data, either through RPA or direct template imports whether that's data from your software or hardware resellers or even vendors. Once it's ingested into the platform, there's a good chance it's going to look and feel very different depending on where that source is. In this case, you can see this MacBook 15 inch is represented three different ways, but ultimately is the same MacBook Pro model. Similarly, Microsoft Project Professional 2016 is also represented different ways. To address that, ServiceNow includes normalization and enrichment capabilities as part of our content service. The dedicated research team of ServiceNow employees that populate an expansive content library, which as of the time of this recording is over 4 million part numbers across hardware and software. This allows us to create a definitive hardware model for what is being discovered in your environment and then all of the assets that roll up to it. The model comprises a manufacturer, a product, a manufacturer model number, but also brings in other data that you're likely either collecting manually or not at all. And that includes the categorization of the device type and the life cycle availability all the way to end of life as described by the manufacturer for that very specific model of product. Once the platform knows what the product model is, we can take that along for the journey on the IT asset management life cycle from acquisition to disposal through a number of out of the box workflows. Similarly, on the software side, we'll be able to parse out the manufacturer, product, version, and edition, but also define exactly how the manufacturer wants that product to be licensed, whether it's a simplistic per device or per user license, or if it's more complex based on the capacity of the hardware, like processors and cores, or even more complex and nuanced from publisher specific cases like Oracle, IBM, etc. Again, we'll also bring in the lifecycle data, including end of support, end of extended support, and end of life for a product. We'll also categorize to help you identify opportunities for application rationalization. From a software asset management perspective, we can take all of that data that we're collecting for your licenses, as well as your installed software and identify compliance posturing based on whether you're over or under licensed. We'll also allow you to action based on the usage of the software. So even if you are non-compliant for a particular application, usage data may suggest that it's not even being used and will allow you to take that data and through workflow, revoke the software on the end user devices or reallocate the licenses to other devices that may require it, thus identifying savings opportunities.